friends it's Kayla I just wanted to do a week-long reading vlog but as you know I always like to have a theme with it so I decided to create kind of like a fake theme where it's a secret TBR in that I don't know what I'm gonna be reading this week and I'm going to let you like guess or I'm going to encourage you to guess the theme of my secret TBR but the whole point is there isn't a theme to my secret TBR you by guessing my secret TBR are choosing my secret TBR <laughs> So I often create these secret TBR videos where I choose a theme and I read a bunch of books based on that and I don't tell you what it is until the video comes out just because I find it really fun. But last month for the first time I decided to show you my TBR as I was reading it throughout the week and have you guess what the theme was. It was when I was reading books for Aries. Pretty impossible to guess the theme to begin with. I knew that which was made it fun for me. But on one of the days this person, who is it? Bailey? Morlino guessed that I was picking my TBR based off of what my subscribers were guessing my TBR to be. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a wild idea. So I wanted to pick a book at random off my bookshelf that I was just interested in to kick this whole thing off. And this is going to spark the entire chain of events this week. There are certain books that you guys constantly request that I do a reading vlog for so you can see my live reactions. This is one of them. Also this is a sequel, it's a second book in a series and I know myself and if I take more than a couple months to read a sequel I will never read a sequel. This series, uh, The Foxhole Court, no it's called All for the Game by Nora Sakovic. It's really controversial. I hated the first book in the series and I'm gonna post a picture of this when I'm done on Instagram and then you're going to guess the theme of what I'm doing. I can already think of a couple things that you might assume that I'm doing based on this and I'm just gonna see what you guess. I don't actually want to go with the most popular theme guess which I think will be uh reading sequels because I don't really want to read any more sequels this week and then every time I post the next book I'm reading you will have an opportunity to guess the theme and then whatever comment I choose from that is going to basically pick the theme and the next book and so on and so forth until the week is over. So we're just gonna begin. I'm gonna start reading this. I did read the first like 50 pages just to make sure I actually wanted to read this for this vlog. I don't have any strong opinions or feelings at all so far uh, but we're gonna read this and then we'll post the picture and just see what happens from here. My biggest request for secret TBRs is just to read books that I actually want to read. So we're going to pick off of my actual TBR shelf instead of buying a whole bunch of random new books for random reasons. Though I do have a bunch of books coming in the mail this week. So who knows? You guys are you guys are dictating what's happening. So today's vlog is a little boring. I'm just hanging out. At, well, I'm gonna hang out at home this entire week. I don't know what I'm talking about. But today I'm just hanging out waiting for this guy to come tint our windows. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with like the house getting really hot. We're at the top of a mountain and we direct like our biggest window directly faces the sun. We don't we lose a lot of uh, cold air. Our AC is overworked. Uh, you guys have noticed I've been running my fan a ton and ruining the sound in my videos lately because it's just so hot and it's only May. So that'll be interesting. I wonder if it'll like look different from the inside. They say it won't, but this is what my windows look like now. And we'll see at the end of the day. The boys are out running some errands and I'm just hanging out here reading The Raven King. The Foxhole Court was a two star, but I was intrigued where the story was going. Uh, this is about a bunch of Xy players, which is an interesting, violent sport. And we're following this new kid on the team, Neil, and he has like this dark, I always smile, like I can't stop laughing at how dumb this book was. Like, and it was bad but he's on this team and he has a secret past and there's people who can't know who he is or what he looks like so he disguises his appearance and um doesn't want to get too close to people but it's like found family teammate stuff in the first book they all just like hated each other 
and literally like would uh, stab each other <laughs> they're friends and they're enemies and then they were hitting on each other it's this very strange environment that i have gotten myself into but the people who he's hiding from essentially well he's hiding from people on his own team but there's these people on another exe team and they became more important characters at the end of this book and now i'm intrigued to know where it's going to go in that regard so the raven king hasn't done anything yet that i've loved honestly a lot of people have said that the more you go in the series the better it gets and i'm not really sure what that's in reference to i would love it to redeem itself in some of the problematic ways um and i don't know enough about like pharmaceuticals and mental health to even start the discourse hopefully it gets more like enjoyable at least to read because if it's not fun and it's not good like i'm wasting my time but if it's fun and not good i can get on board with that i'm sorry i didn't update you yesterday i barely read anymore i'm very bored there's my update my other update is my windows are so dark like my whole house is so dark now but apparently it's supposed to go away and look totally normal in a couple days so i knew you were very excited to know about my windows but yeah i haven't even cracked 100 pages because i just don't care <laughs> okay <laughs> hours later i have barely made any progress i should probably give up but i'm committed uh, I'm gonna spoil the entire book series moving forward so like we can have some real conversations. I hope that's cool with you. Um, so the whole thing is that he is like hiding his identity but at this point everybody knows his identity. Everybody that he was hiding his identity from basically except like this one person that I think matters because I think they're gonna get in a relationship at some point. And yet he's still like dyeing his hair and worried about his contacts and I don't understand. And like using a different name. And I feel like this reminds me so much of my most hated book of all time, Dangerous Lies with Becca Fitzpatrick, where the girl's name is Estella and she goes into witness protection and her new name is Stella. So we just found out that Neil's real name is Nathaniel. He's had a bunch of other fake names, much more unique names, but now when it actually matters, his fake name is pretty much his real name. So the bad guys know who he is and I don't know, they're threatening him. And the whole book, Neil's been like, or the first book and this book, he's like, I'm just gonna play this sport and like, do what I can and as soon as I have to I'm gonna run constantly talking about how he's gonna run away like as soon as they find out he has to get on the run and then everyone officially just like found out who he is and the one person he was hiding from the most who like barely even seems to care who he is um is like you better run and he's like no I must stay I get it okay it's like a, it's a character arc we're discovering that we can trust people and make friends and it's all so stupid <laughs> i really wish there was an audiobook of this because this is i feel like i've been reading this for a week like it just won't end update it's day three of reading this cursed book so i'm on page 212 that's it i've never had a book take me this long yes i have the vegetarian it just got really intense and i wasn't ready for it which is embarrassing because like i've literally been telling you people are stabbing each other like teammates who want each other to succeed are like in the change room the locker room and like stabbing each other it's not funny because it got like it's getting very intense and um i understand now why people told me to look into trigger warnings i don't personally need trigger warnings but i understand why you would warn someone before going into this series because what i feel kind of the same as i did in the first book though i do think this book is better written and is less problematic overall 
Um, but I feel the same as like, I just couldn't get into it. I wasn't really into it. Something was making me continue reading. And then we have like one scene that kind of flips the book. And it's not the intense scene that I'm in right now. It was the scene like leading up to this, but it's just like when the characters go somewhere else and do something else that's interesting, that's when I like get actually invested in the book. So it kind of sucks that it happened in the last third, but in the first book it was when they went and they did this like TV interview and I was like, oh, it's actually getting interesting now. And then for this one, they're going, um, like back to one of the characters houses that they haven't been to in a really long time to try to like reconnect with family bad shit's happening but like the build up to this visit and like all the characters deciding like who goes and that was just like a moment in the book that made me become re-interested in what was going on and now i feel like i'm gonna fly through this and then we can finally post the picture of the book three days into my own challenge before I even tell you I'm doing this challenge. I did it. I'm done. It's over. And I'm giving it three stars. The last like chapter of each of these books makes me have to read the next one. I don't know if I want to read it right away. I think I need to take another like month off. This is also 400 pages, so not really conducive to this type of challenge anyway. But yeah, getting the backstory of all of these characters just gives you more time to understand them. They're all really troubled individuals. They come from uh, traumatic, abusive, horrifying pasts, and they have this opportunity to be a part of this team together, and they don't trust each other. They don't trust anyone. They don't want to be friends. They have drug issues. They have friendship and commitment issues and reading about all those things is hard when you start to connect with these characters and you want them to make better decisions so many things that happened in here made me so aggravated but I actually think that that's a positive thing when a book evokes such emotion like you obviously care at least a bit they made stupid choices they made the wrong choices there's a lot of things that I think uh, the author intends to do that aggravate me and then things that are probably not intentional that still aggravate me like the ableist language um, there's some representation issues most of it is still just like over the top and ridiculous there's a lot of actual in-game play and descriptions of Exe which I think is really fun so yeah didn't love it didn't hate it don't know why I'm still reading it but I am now we can post the picture and see what you want me or what you think I'm doing. Okay, so I posted this picture and the guesses are rolling in. Some of them are expected. Some people think I'm reading sequels. Some people think I'm reading sequels of books I don't like. And then some people are saying I'm reading books with the same title as other books that I've loved or I've just read. And I totally get that one and I expected that one because it's called The Raven King and obviously my favorite series of all time has a book called The Raven King in it. So that's the first one that jumped out at me that I could continue. But you guys, I just looked at my entire TBR shelf and there is not a single book that has the same title as a book I have ever read. I have books that I've already read with the same title. Like I've read two books called The One before. I've read two books called Replica before. I've read a book called The Dry and a book called Dry. I've read two books called Losing It. I've read a book called Unravel and a book called Unravel Me. So that exists on my red shelf, but I swear it is not a thing. I'm sure I could find something like if I went on book outlet I could search all of my favorite titles my favorite books and find those things and make that a video that for sure could be a thing but it's not. I'm trying to read stuff off my TBR that's the actual secret TBR theme is that I'm just reading books that I actually fully want to read that I've picked for myself and then you're just dictating it. I don't have anything like that. Um, but another one of the guesses was that I'm reading books with King in the title, which I think is interesting. Uh, I wonder if because I just posted a picture of King and the Dragonflies, you think that this is connected to that too? So you've seen two King things in my feed. I'm looking at my Goodreads TBR to see if I have anything else with King in it. And I do. I actually have a book that's 
Oh, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> okay. I actually have a bunch of packages that I have not opened. They're pre-orders and I was going to do uh, a full unboxing and not just a book haul this month. But. I'm just thinking because somebody else commented something about royalty in book titles and I actually have two books that I ordered one of them is a pre-order one of them I ordered with it but they clearly didn't come together I have like 20 things ordered and tracking is really confusing right now in Canada so I don't actually know what these books are but I know I've ordered two books one called the knockout queen and one called the wicker king and now I kind of just want to open these and see if those are the ones that are here because that could be interesting. Ooh, this one isn't that, but it's the Fascinators. Look how beautiful this is. This one I can't show you because it's for another video. So whoops. And then this one, it's the Wicker King. Okay, I know I was supposed to be reading off of my actual physical TBR, but this was about to go on my TBR. This is by Kate Ancrum. I don't know the plot of this. I've just heard it's weird and I loved a Kate Ancrum, The Weight of the Stars. So I ordered this. What is happening? Okay, I don't understand. Um... Well, here's the thing. This could be a quick read too. And it has King in the title. So many people are guessing the ones that I expected. So I'm excited to go with the one that only one person has mentioned. Burn Vev. Good for you. We're going with King. Thank you for your suggestion. And then when I post this, everyone's going to guess that it's King in the title. And instead of going again with the most popular answer, I'll find something else that's a little weirder and we'll go with that. Hello, we're in my kitchen. I'm very tired. I'm 10% of the way through this. I don't know why that matters. Like it's an audiobook. Um, I'm just on like page 38 and there's 300 whatever. I mean, wow. What are you? You okay? Your face is melted. Did I mention I'm tired? I'm making enchiladas for dinner, which I'm very excited about. And I'm gonna watch Jess while I do that. She read some books because of booktubers and she's reading No Exit and All Your Perfects and The Selection, which is all very exciting for me. She's also reading Beach Read, which um, I'm interested to read, but from all the people who love romance, people haven't been loving it. For people who don't traditionally love romance, they've been loving it. So I'm excited to read it even more now. Anyway, if you're new here, I add random things that have nothing to do with what I'm currently reading into my vlogs. Let's get back to the book. I love how this is written. I am kind of obsessed with it. It's a mixed media feel. There's like a receipt and there's a poster and a CD and they add things to the story but they're not the story. And I forgot that you all told me I would love this especially because there are some characters in The Weight of the Stars that are also in here. So while this book isn't part of a series, it does kind of feel like a companion novel. And now you're all definitely gonna guess that I'm reading sequels. We're following a character named August who has a lot of opinions about everybody he meets and it's interesting because I go to the Goodreads of this and some of my friends hate it and some of my friends love it. And I wonder if a lot of people hate it because of August. He is basically like talking about how every girl he meets is wearing too much makeup. And then we have a character Jack and he's in a relationship with this girl and August hates her too, I think because he's jealous of her. I really like how this is written because it gives little hints of characters, like it talks about characters like you already know them. Like it'll say, August was hanging out with someone and the twins and then we don't know who the twins are but in the next chapter we get introduced to them and that's happened like three times and I just really like that. Hello, we're out and about kind of we're just sitting in the vehicle running errands that are like drive through errands and we just stopped and robbie's getting groceries so i'm going to continue reading the wicker king i'm exactly 100 pages in and i love it and i brought holes for liam to read because i can't wait for him to finish it so we can watch the movie we're at our next stop the grocery store wow i just posted this picture reading The Wicker King, and I'm excited to see what people guess. So far, it's people guessing royalty in the title. 
which isn't shocking. So we'll wait until something else pops up. Reading update. This is getting challenging to read in the dark because we can't really tell. But I don't know. I should have read this in the daylight because it's getting hard to actually see the words on the dark background. But I can see that it changes to white text at some point, which is very interesting. I haven't had a book make me cry yet this year. But um, this one, it's fucking me up. I'm like deep breathing to stop myself from tearing up. It's not even that sad. It's just so heavy and I can't deal with it. Like it it hurts me and I don't know why. This is what happened to me in The Weight of the Stars too. Like I, it just felt painful to read. Oh my god, I don't understand. It's just so great. <laughs> Like, I can't even stop and think about what this book is doing. Because I could sit here and think about the fact that I feel like it's just a big metaphor for depression. And it... <sighs> oh my gosh. The Wicker King was literally perfect. Um, five out of five. I couldn't even give you a comprehensive review last night because I was just crying. I just don't understand how she managed such a smart story. Like these chapters are really short. It's kind of epistolary, like they're little notes, vignettes. And the book itself visually represents the characters like physical illness and mental illness at the same time. I didn't realize this was like polyamorous. Uh, a bunch of different people in relationships and that just being like normal and accepted. I've read a couple books with that before and I always love them and this did it too. And looking at some people's reviews drives me crazy how people say it's like unrealistic when it's not. It's just like not your experience. This felt so fucking genuine. Reading interviews with her is very interesting. Uh, seeing her thought process behind certain inclusions. Apparently there's a novella that comes after this, which is called like The Golden Raven or something, which is very strange because it ties these books together even more. If I was guessing the theme of my own TBR, I'd say that like I was picking something based off of the last title. Or you know what? I would guess that I'm doing something to do with the Raven Cycle because the last book was called The Raven King and this book, is so weirdly similar to The Raven Cycle in certain ways. And I know that this author has never read The Raven Cycle. I was just reading, like I said, an interview with her. And it's so funny how there are certain things that really reminded me of The Raven Cycle, like uh, a girl who works in a diner. There's this obsession with, um, I don't even remember what it's called. It's called The Something Blue. And just like the word blue being over and over again was so weird because obviously blue is the star of the Raven Cycle. And it made me think like, would I have liked the Raven Cycle even more if it included like pictures and letters and stuff? Also, there's like this old abandoned factory that's the focus. And then there's like people who see things that aren't really there. And it's totally different from the Raven Cycle. Um, but just like the, there are themes that are similar and strange. And obviously we have a male-male romance in here. And um, it did remind me of Adam and Ronan. It's different. Um, this was more like explicit and obviously a much faster burn, but uh, there was like an Adam character and an Adam's dad character. So I'm just filming a video now, uh, queer recommendations that I need to edit and post. So I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to read today. It's already like late into the evening, but we can definitely pick our next read because all of your predictions are here. There's over a hundred of them and uh, they're all pretty much as expected. You still think I'm doing sequels or companion books um, and then things with King in the title is like the number one guess, but there are a couple people that are like, 
it can't be king because that's too easy and you're right so the couple interesting guesses that i've seen this one said books featuring sports this one is books that have three words and four syllables as the title this one said lgbtq and now i feel like in posting this video today you're gonna think it's like a hint to my secret tbr this one said are you reading all books from the perspective of guys and then the one that shook me to my core which i just have to go with says deck of cards chooses your tbr sarah it's fucking brilliant the idea that you thought that i was just like flipping a card and i was like oh got a king oh got a king again and now i'm just gonna what's it gonna be is it gonna be a seven is it gonna be a joker this is my favorite guess and Robbie just bought a deck of cards like a week ago. That just took me way too much effort to stand up and I wish you didn't see that. We apparently needed a new deck of cards. These have never been used, so I need to shuffle them. I also don't really know how to shuffle and I'm sorry you're zoomed in on my nasty nails. You know, that wasn't terrible. There's clearly a very limited number of things that I could pull here and I've already done a buzzwordathon where I read books with numbers in the title so I don't really have that many left on my TBR but we're just gonna assume this is gonna work out perfectly okay are we ready are we ready oh my gosh okay eight of hearts eight of hearts eight of hearts <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm gonna have to use my Goodreads to see if I have eight in any titles. I know I've got like a four, a five, a two. Nope. I have a lot of books I've already read with eight. Eight Perfect Murders, Figure Eight, The Basic Eight, From a Buick Eight. Okay, so we're gonna have to go with hearts. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> ah, I know I have two books with heart in the title. And they're both sequels. Um, yeah, okay, we've got Rebel Heart and we've got The Heart of Betrayal. As much as you guys are guessing that I'm reading sequels, and I did read a sequel as my first book, I had no intention of reading any more sequels anytime soon. <laughs> if I wanted to do a whole reading vlog of sequels, like I would have started with Obsidio. But you know what? The whole point of this vlog was to go with whatever happened and obviously push me to read some things that have been on my TBR for years. This is long. This is long too. This is like 400 pages. Um, and I know that the writing style of this took me like half of the first book, Blood Red Road, to really get into. So I was planning on rereading the first book before the second book, but I could probably just skim some reviews and have it remind me what happened um while the heart of betrayal i 100 percent know that i want to reread the kiss of deception before continuing in the series so i guess we're doing this wow okay thanks sarah for this the thing is the raven king and the wicker king have so many things in common like you guys noticed they're both three words they're both four syllables they both start with the they're both male characters female authors they're both between the pages of 310 and 320 they both have birds on the cover they both have animals on the cover they're both queer they both have ratings over a four on goodreads and this just goes so outside of that that it's gonna throw you off so much. I wish that there was something at least like title or cover wise that was similar between all of these because then you could continue guessing. But this one's either gonna completely throw you off and you're gonna stop guessing or you're going to assume, okay, it is series and companions and then you're never gonna guess anything else. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna read this, let you know what I think and then uh, I'll take a picture of it so I'm ready to post it tomorrow okay oh i look like an egg today's a long weekend a holiday and i'm just gonna spend my day reading i am at like part two or i don't know it's not in parts this one's called snake river it's 88 pages in i didn't actually decide to skim any reviews or anything of the first book and i'm already like sucked in and remembering things so that's nice 
I looked at my Goodreads review and I read Blood Red Road in 2017. It doesn't feel like that long ago, but that's when it was. So I'm impressed I haven't forgotten things, but I do think that some of the things that I now remember about Blood Red Road and the reasons that I loved it aren't going to be a plot point in here because there was like this whole game portion of Blood Red Road that reminded me of the Hunger Games that I really liked. And I remember feeling like that wasn't even enough of the book. I wanted more of it. And I already posted a picture of this on Instagram and your comments are coming in. So I figured even though I haven't finished this, I'm gonna pick my next book or you're gonna pick my next book just so I'm prepared and I know what's coming. And maybe if I need some motivation to finish this, I will have that by being excited about the next book. So besides you still guessing series, Sarah popped in and said she still thinks Deck of Cards is choosing my TBR, which it did. Then said my guess is you're trying books from authors you've only liked, loved one book so far. This person said authors you've read from before, goldish covers or authors you've read from before. It's funny because I think the photo of this turned out looking a little gold but in real life it's orange but I definitely see where you're going with that. Yellow and black covers, something related to bees. Something involving authors you've read from before, authors you've already read from before. Sharon left a long comment really thinking this through because I've read from The Weight of the Stars author once. I've read the first book in The Foxhole Court and I've read the first book in Blood Red Road. Books you've only read one for that author's books. Authors you read before. Second books by authors you've only tried once. Okay, that's obviously what we have to do because that is true with all three of these books and with the next one. And then we'll have to make sure that the last one definitely doesn't fit that. I feel like the last book is gonna have to debunk any theories that have come up so far. So authors I've read from before. Authors I've read one book from before. Oh no. Oh, Louisa Meal, Lori Elizabeth Flynn, Karen Thompson Walker, Sandra Sineros, Tara Altabrando, Alex Marwood, Alex Marwood again, <laughs> Alex Marwood again. Okay, I only have a few options. What should I do? I want to post a picture every day and I have nothing to post today because I'm not going to read my next book yet because I'm still getting through Rebel Heart. But maybe um, because last time I did the secret TBR I posted this picture that was like I'm reading one of these which one do you think it is? And I could do that this time too and have you actually pick the book. I'm thinking because I have three Alex Marwoods here and I would really like to read a thriller this week to you know mix up genres. I have three to choose from. I have The Killer Next Door, I have The Wicked Girls, and I have this one that I haven't even gotten a chance to haul yet called The Poison Garden because I didn't do a haul last month. I've read one Alex Marwood called The Darkest Secret and I gave this four stars and I've kept picking up her books but I've never read another one from her. So I'll take a picture of all four of these and post it and then I don't know whichever gets the most guesses I don't know what's gonna make you vote for any of these I'm gonna post this as kind of a trick to see if like you remember that I've even read this before and maybe it'll throw off your entire guess or maybe it'll confirm your guess I am feeling productive as heck today I have already um, done Liam's classes for the day. I washed my makeup brushes. I washed all of my sheets and blankets and they're nice and white again. <laughs> also, I washed my hair, but once I take out my braids, who knows how much I'll enjoy the results. I've done a bunch of laundry and I am at the halfway point of Rebel Heart. I'm still loving it. So basically this book follows a girl named Saba. In the first book, it kicks off with uh, these people, these men on horseback coming into uh, where she lives with her family, her dad, her brother, and her brother gets taken and she is basically just on this hunt to find him. She meets a lot of people in the first book, goes through a lot of stuff, and there's a swoony love interest. And then in this book, uh, it's just dealing with the aftermath of a lot of things that happened in the first book deaths, fights, there are some villains that she's not even sure like if they're true villains and now she has this reputation that's following her around and it's all very interesting and dramatic and I love it so far but a lot of people have told me that the sequels to Blood Red Road aren't good so I'm just interested to see 
where it goes. I know I'm still not done, but I am picking my next book because on my productivity kick, I might as well take some bookstagram pictures today. I got more comments on this picture than like anything I've posted so far, probably just because it was easy for you to guess the book I'm reading and not so much the theme. I thought what would be fun is to just take the very first comment and read whichever one they picked. And that was uh, Camila and she said the poison garden for sure was her guess. And then I was like, is that really fair? She did comment like 30 seconds after the picture, but then right after her, the next two comments literally picked the other two books. So I was like, okay, I will go ahead and figure out like what got the most votes. And it was the poison garden. That could definitely change um, by like even later today or by the time this video comes out. But a lot of people are guessing the poison garden because you think I'm doing a yellow, black, or outline of an object type of theme. But I am nervous that the further we go into this challenge, the least amount of things these books have in common. And once I post one of these today, it's going to be your last opportunity to guess and for me to pick my last book. So I am going with The Poison Garden just because you picked it, but also it is the yellow goldy thing. Hello, it's the next day. I look like Sideshow Bob. Um, I had a lot of feelings last night while I was reading this book and I don't really know how to well articulate my thoughts because I'm confused. Um, I just, I loved this book so desperately and then it just went off the fucking rails. I legitimately don't understand what the author was thinking. <laughs> I am one to not decide my enjoyment of a book based on the character's actions and how much I like respect or agree with what they're doing. So I'm sure if I read reviews, I would see people talking about how Saba is just so stupid and makes such stupid decisions. Every single time she's offered an opportunity to do the right thing, she does the opposite. It's frustrating, it's so aggravating, but I loved it. I think it makes her such an interesting character. Her choices just makes the book go down routes you wouldn't expect and it always keeps you on your toes. So for the first like three quarters of this book, regardless of her being ridiculous, I'm talking like abandoning her family to like chase after a boy repeatedly and then never learning from her mistakes even though she acknowledges that they're mistakes and she needs to do better then on the next page she's literally fleeing again i was all on board i was like heart racing can't wait to see what happens and then the last quarter i just like genuinely don't understand the purpose of the choices that the author made. I don't want to spoil the book, so I won't. <laughs> but like, um, so there's a love pyramid in this book, and I have nothing against multiple love interests. Um, but like, we're in the future, people are dying. It's like a fantastical future too. I know a lot of people call this dystopian. Maybe even I did when I read the first book. No. But between like her close family members getting kidnapped, uh, almost dying, close friends of her, terrible things happening, there's a lot of strange focus on the love interests and how everyone's so in love with Saba and how she has to let this boy down gently and then she's gonna sleep with this boy and then she's gonna chase after this boy but no he's bad and now he's good and I don't believe anything that you people say about him but then actually I think he's terrible I'm gonna kill him. This girl is wild and I just like didn't understand certain things that were going on in the latter quarter especially because uh, she has this like one big goal to accomplish and she could have accomplished it so easily um but instead she took 20 other routes to get there and then essentially i don't know if this is a spoiler maybe just skip ahead i really i don't know how to talk about this book 
I feel like if you've wanted to read the series, you probably already have. Like, I know I'm late to the party. But, like, they're in the exact same position, page one, as page 420. So, like, there was no purpose to this book as far as the actual like plot of the entire series nothing like she I don't know that she learned anything I'm sure there are some character development in this book that's important but as far as where the characters are in life nothing but I still loved most of it so it's so confusing and I usually don't like uh, road trip style books and this is very like uh, just traveling constantly on horseback on camelback uh, with her special crow and wolf dog friend this doesn't sound like something that I would love but I did and I'm sure a lot of people probably also talked about how it's so slow and nothing fucking happened but I love character stuff more so than plot stuff and there was like you know a lot of inner monologue and a lot of dialogue and stuff that I liked and then it just was so weird but I don't know how to write this I kind of want to give it four stars and I don't know what's wrong with me I remember feeling this way after the first book too I gave it five stars and I was like I don't know how like looking back on this book it shouldn't get five stars but it does so I've been struggling through this all day so this is about an apocalypse cult uh, who were found dead by poison in their isolated community. So that's pretty much all I knew going in. Um, I'm down for cult stuff and it obviously intrigued me. Also the idea of a poison garden itself, just because of a book that I read last year, a thriller I really loved. That I don't know if it would be a spoiler that involves a poison garden, but I was like, ooh, maybe poison gardens are my new favorite thing. So that's why I wanted to read this. Um, it's not a thriller. It's not a mystery. Uh, it is the aftermath of the cult. And it says it's suspense fiction, which I apparently missed because I thought this was going to be a thriller. So I switched over to the audiobook, um, but I'm not really enjoying it. And I don't know if it's the audiobook or the story itself. So I don't actually know where I'm at, but I would say like between a third and a half. Through. And I'm pretty close to DNFing it, but I feel like I can't because then I'll have to pick a whole nother book to read for this vlog. And that would screw up the entire, like, thing if I didn't actually read the books that I told you I was reading. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep reading and hopefully it picks up. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I've been having a rough day. I've cried, I've yelled. I've dropped my entire lunch on the floor. Liam's cried, Liam's yelled. <laughs> I had plans to go out and go to the beach and try to feel normal, but the weather's terrible. So um, I'm just trying to finish this. I only have 50 more pages. Seven? 50. Liam only has 10 pages left of holes and then we're gonna watch the movie together. Right now right now right now and i'm probably gonna take the rest of the day off from reading but i might come to you picking my next book i'm just not oh my god <laughs> someone pooped on their window i know someone pooped on our window should i show them like rude <laughs> It was right in my face too. I was just trying to open the window and I was really close to the glass and I was like, sunshine, but there was no sun and there was poop. <laughs> anyway, even while acknowledging that this book isn't what I assumed it to be, that's not the book's fault. And I'm just trying to enjoy what it is, um, but it's hard. I'm not having a great time. Usually it does benefit me to not read the full synopsis of a book because I just don't want to know too much, but not reading the full one this time, there are certain things that I just didn't know. Just mostly the fact that it takes place um, a lot of the aftermath and kind of re-getting used to society. Not re-used to, used to at all, because these people uh, lived in the commune. I would definitely recommend this for fans of, um, Room by Emma Donahue. I don't know if that one sounds weird, but I equally didn't love that book for 
a certain aspect. Anyway, can't wait to finish this. It's like only a seven. <sighs> Okay, I have to be honest, I don't even know how to talk about this book. I don't want to like rip it to shreds because so many people I know like could enjoy this. It just wasn't for me. I'm giving it two stars. There are certain things I enjoyed like we have multiple perspectives. People um, a little bit like in the cult time and then afterwards. People who are taking care of the kids who like survived and then it is there's a little bit of mystery because we're finding out like what really happened to the people in the cult. But honestly, the story just didn't go to a place that I was interested in. I didn't love much of anything. The pacing, the writing, the character development, the character descriptions. Like, it just overall didn't work for me. And I'm going to try my best to put my thoughts together for my monthly wrap up because I just, I can't right now. So making the decision of where to go for my fifth book after The Poison Garden is difficult. I have a few comments to choose from from this photo but most of them at this point are just confused and okay with being confused. Either I need to read from an author that it's clear I've read a lot from them or I've read nothing from them. Some of the authors I feel like you wouldn't really know that and I want it to be kind of obvious that that's like not the theme just because it's being guessed so much. All four of these books do have some things in common. They're all written by women. They are all a little gold or orange. They're all paperbacks. I have read from each of these authors once before. Somebody said books with a found family trope, which definitely fits too for all of those books. Oh my gosh, this person guessed recreating old buzzword-a-thons. I don't think that actually fits, but that's kind of a fun guess. Oh my god, this person said they think I'm spinning a color wheel every time to pick my book. And I'm just like landing on yellow every time. Oh my god, I love that idea! And I get to do a craft! Just kidding. Um, I realized that I have a wheel already from life. So building my own, while it sounded super fun, uh, kind of a waste if I literally already own one. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, and the only thing that's missing is like white and black and gray. But pretty much every book on here has a secondary color if it's black, white, or gray. Let's go with books spines because every spine here pretty much has a color oh my gosh i'm excited should we take a thumbnail with this life chooses my tbr but not really it is a little broken <laughs> so i'll hold it as flat as i can hope this works that's orange what are the odds this is the orange we're going with. Okay, here's our orange. I see a match right there. These two. Ooh. This one? I guess this one. So these are all the orange-ish spines on my shelf. Now, I need to figure out a good balance between something I actually want to read and something that is really different from everything else. So the theme is even more confusing for you. I do also want something that's been on my TBR for a while. I think I'm leaning towards picking between these two. Ooh, this would make such a good book face picture. That just made the decision for me. I don't know for a fact, as much as I talk about loving Josh Mallerman, I don't know for sure that you all know that I've read more than one book from him. So you might just continue to guess that I'm still reading from an author I read before, but this would be such a random pick. It doesn't have gold or orange, like a lot on the cover, so I don't think you'd guess it. It's a hardcover, not a paperback. It's nonfiction, and the title, Talking As Fast As I Can, doesn't share any words or the same amount of syllables as any other title. This may seem like a weird choice, because uh, I know I've told you that I don't love books about like celebrity fame type stuff, but I have read a few memoirs in my day, and there are a few memoirs on my radar from people that I've like followed for a long time or I felt connected to in my childhood, and there is part of me that wants to see 
hear some like behind the scenes type stuff about Gilmore Girls specifically like that'd be cool this was a huge part of my childhood but I'm obviously not intrigued enough to have read it in the last like whatever two years it's probably been sitting on my shelf I feel like you guys are gonna be so mad at me for this one I'm like what are you doing let's do it why not I didn't love the audiobook of the poison garden I quit that I don't know if I told you that uh, and just finished it physically and maybe there's a good audiobook of this what if she narrates it herself that'd be cool oh she does great that's what I'm doing oh my god what a random pick if yesterday I was giving you sideshow Bob vibes, today is Hermione Granger. They tell you not to brush your curls. Don't brush your curls. Don't brush your curls. And then you brush your curls and then you want to cry. Actually, you know who I look like? I just look like my dad in high school. Everyone who says that Liam looks like me, no. Liam looks like my dad. But that's because I look like my dad. I get it. I'm reading this. I took a book face picture yesterday. I hate it. It's making me very insecure about the shape of my face. And then I also saw a TikTok on the same day that was like, they were doing this. And apparently this, the distance from your chin to your the bottom of your nose is supposed to be the same as from the bottom of your nose to your eyebrows. Excuse me? And then you're supposed to have a whole nother finger length, forehead to chin. Like what? So I guess I have a fat chin and the shortest nose on the planet. It, I'm upset. <laughs> the audiobook is great. I'm so glad I picked up the audiobook. I just loved Gilmore Girls so much. And like Lauren Graham is Laura like Gilmore. So the way she's narrating it is just so enjoyable and her talking about uh, her past and how she got into acting. I'm probably only a third of the way through so far, but I'm having a good time. Her dad is popping in, like there was a phone conversation in the book and he popped in to narrate that section, which was cool. And then she's like singing in the book a little bit. And can I just read you some of the final guesses that are popping up based on this book? Most people are just confused, validly. Um, you think I'm messing with you. You don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Reach and Lily's library said books by authors who have names books with titles oh my gosh Camille King is in this title what oh my god the Raven King the Wicker King Alex Marwood has been blurbed by Stephen King and Ta King how did that happen the only one that really doesn't fit is this some people have said things about ratings. So like maybe these are the highest rated books on my TBR or the best rated audiobooks, which I think is a good guess. This person said I read like five different genres. So maybe it has to do with different genres. Okay, I'm a little shook by this guess too because it says all of the author's first names are in order of the alphabet. K, L, M, N. But then this one should have been O or what comes before K? J. So this one threw off her guess, but that's so interesting. I didn't connect those things either. So I'm just going to finish this up today. I think I really need to get outside. It's still kind of gloomy, but Liam and I are going to go down to the beach and throw some rocks in the water and just sit there and read. And I'll give you a final update at the end of the day. So this is turning out to be even better than I thought it would be. There's this whole section where she re-watches or watches Gilmore Girls for the first time and comments on every single season and like what she remembers about filming and what she was reminded of that's really fun. And then we go through some other career stuff. Uh, she talks about some really interesting things like um, Hollywood's obsession with diets and plastic surgery. And I think she gives a really good perspective on it. And now we're back at the point where she's doing Gilmore Girls again and got the opportunity to play Lorelai again. How that felt, how she reacted, how she felt about certain things that they did. And it's really fun. Okay, I just finished it. It's definitely more about her journey than the industry, which I think is appropriate and what I was looking for. And just as a huge fan of Gilmore Girls, I loved it. Okay, let's do final thoughts with the sounds of a screaming child and video games and TikTok and more video games all piled on top of each other. If you ever wonder why I seem to film all of my clips in my room and never leave, it's because this is the only place of somewhat quiet in my home. Okay, first let's recap what on earth happened. I started the week with The Raven King which I gave three stars and 
I just vlogged because you wanted me to vlog it. Then you thought I was reading things with King in the title. So I did that and read The Wicker King by Kay Ingram, which I gave five stars and love so much. Then you thought I was reading books based on cards. So I did. I read Rebel Heart by Moira Young. And I gave this four stars. I plan to continue in both of these series, but I don't know when. If anything, that's the most shocking part of this entire video, is that I'm planning on continuing in some series. Then you thought I was reading from authors that I've read from once before. So I did. And I read The Poison Garden by Alex Marwood, which I gave two stars, but I still really appreciate what this did. And then you thought I was picking books based off of like the color of the cover or spun a wheel and landed on yellow, but I landed on orange. And I picked Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham, which I'm giving five stars. Nonfiction is so hard to rate because like, no, this isn't on par with all of the fiction that I've read that's five stars. I probably won't talk about this ever again in my life. I'll probably never think about it again. But objectively, like, this was perfect for what it is. It couldn't have been done any better. And I got everything that this book promised it to be. So it was great. And here we have it, five books in, I don't even know, I think it ended up being more like 10 days instead of seven days because of this. But I had a good time. I really enjoyed you guessing things. There's always a fun part of seeing how these books are connected that even I didn't think of. Also, I want to note, I know nobody will probably notice this at all, but uh, a couple of my last, sounds, oh, this is so weird. I just need to acknowledge it. Um, some of my last Instagrams look a lot like some other um, bookstagrammers. And that's because I have simultaneously been filming a video <laughs> where I try to bookstagram based on my favorite bookstagrammers and I copy their photos and I comment on it um, and I've had to unfortunately scrap that entire video. It was supposed to go up on Wednesday. That's why there wasn't a Wednesday video. I lost a bunch of footage uh, that I couldn't recreate of me actually making the photos happen. Like for this one, um, I have the footage of me like cleaning off the laptop and I have commented on how I couldn't find the cord for my um, Google Home. And it was based on this lovely photo. But now that that video is never gonna come out, I feel this sense of anxiety that it's sitting on my Instagram and somebody would recognize it and be like, oh, she's copying someone else, which I was. But it was for a purpose. But now that that video is never coming out, it just looks like I'm copying someone. So I just want to give you like 10 bookstagram accounts right now that I love so much that I was going to mention in that video that you should follow and you should check out and that I find inspiration from. And I'm going to link them all down below even though it has nothing to do with this video, but I needed to mention it in some capacity. So this seemed like the most appropriate place to do it. That's it for the video. Thank you so much for even participating at all and giving me some content and guesses to go off of. I love doing this and next time I promise there will actually be a theme. Bye! <laughs>